It is time for the last semi-finalist round. Round 4, Battle 2, or Battle 30 overall. Just one more battle left, the finals. And today, we are going to decide who is going into that battle. The contenders, Ujimacha Taniko-san from Ocha, going up against Rikyu from Breakaway Macha. Already brewed up and fresh off of their victories in round 3, Let's get reacclimated and find our final finalist. First up, the taiko san So creamy. Super, super creamy and smooth. Sweet, young peas, young asparagus. Riku, not quite as creamy, but still a fair amount. Definitely super smooth. Just incredibly, incredibly smooth. A little bit more going on in the flavors. Yeah, with well, the both of them very heavily umami laden, but the taiko san is mostly the green notes. The peas, asparagus, Baby spinach, zucchini a little bit. Riku has a little bit something else going on. Still has those green notes, but there's a little bit deeper, not quite the cereal notes that I picked up before. A little bit, a little bit, but maybe that's more like a kind of a toasty note. Yeah, that's a good way. Like um, roasted vegetables. Uh, we just had roasted broccoli last night, so kind of that more caramelized bits of green from a nice roasting. The sweetness off of this Taikosan is kind of crazy. Not that this is bitter by any stretch of the imagination, neither have any bitterness, no astringency, but the sweetness level on the Taikosan is just slightly a little bit higher. Let's just finish these off. Finish up the Riku now. I think I like the, the aftertaste of the Riku a little bit better than the Matcha Taikosan, but oh, this is tough. I think I'm gonna give it to the Taikosan. Bit of a surprise, none of the breakaway matchas are gonna be in the final. Really did not see that one coming. They're Ultra premium offerings are just all so good. The only one that I probably wouldn't go back and buy would be Blend 94, I think. Otherwise, I think you'd be happy with any offering from Breakaway Matcha. Once you get into that final four, the Hikari, the Riku, the Essie, and the Daphne, those four ultra, ultra premium, it's worth, I would say, picking up the flight of the four gram containers. It's still going to be expensive, even for the flights, but even just... To do it once and say you've tried them, I say it's worth it. But, man, that aftertaste on that Riki was so good. I just got a hint of, like, super sweet. It's just, it's such a good finish on the Riku. I almost debated changing the winner. Taiko, again, they're just, they're both so, so good. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to keep Taiko-san as our final finalist. So that means our bracket now looks like this. And it means I can tell you about the last holdout from Breakaway Matcha. For Riku, the 30 gram container is going to come in at $129 or $4.30 per gram. Season Cultivar Unknown, Origin, Uji Tawara, Kyoto. The description coming off of Breakaway Matcha's website is as follows This tea, whipped up thick, seems to send memory into overdrive, into a contemplative state. We think Sendo Rikyu, the most masterful and original matcha connoisseur in Japan's very long history of tea, would have marveled at this rich, umami-laden flavor, brilliant color, and ridiculously long finish. This is a dreamy tea that tastes beautiful in any concentration, thick or thin, and sates like nothing else. I mean, it made it into the semifinals here, so it's probably my favorite from Breakaway Matcha, but it is one of their ultra ultra premium offerings if you can swing even just the little four gram container in a flight i would recommend it it's incredibly delicious but we have our finalist uji matcha taiko san we will see you tomorrow for the ultimate battle the last in the series to find our champion see you then